Good morning. Good morning, ladies. How are you? Good. How about you? We're doing good. Yeah. Your microphone is not connected. That's why I cannot unmute you. Connect your microphone. Can you guys hear me? I could hear you. Okay. I could hear everybody except Jennifer, who doesn't have a phone, who doesn't have a microphone. <laughs> Standard, Jen, we love you, girl. I don't think I need. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Now we can hear you. I yes. did it. Oh my God, I'm alive. Ooh, so bad. <laughs> I should keep you muted, though. <laughs> no. I, <laughs> I liked you better quiet. Okay, how do I, how can I, how can I, I, I want to see all of you. Like, how do I do that? I hate this. You, um... you needed a Zoom class a week ago before this. I do. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I think I tell you nothing that day at my house. No, you didn't actually. <laughs> How do I see everyone? Mm, are you Where doing are it from you your phone? Your cell phone or your computer? Zoom. I'm on my computer. You should be able to line. see all of us at the same time. I know there has to be like a little thing that goes like this, no? Oh, on the uh -huh. top right. On the top right, there's a grid. On the top right, there's like a grid option. For one? I'm sorry, guys. I have to look to at everybody at the same everything. time. Oh, yeah. If you have. No, I don't On see it. On the top right, there's a little grid. It's mm. a lot of little dots. Yeah, but it, it just makes it bigger. <laughs> a lot of no, little dots. No, right dots. next to that bigger, there should be a, a speaker view or grid view. I can't if, you do a, if you do a speaker view, you will see the speaker when, when the speaker's talking, whoever's talking, in a big screen, and then you're going to see all of us in little squares. Anybody not a part of, like, the panel? We're so sorry. <laughs> oh, are people on here? Are there people of course people are in yes, there. Yeah, there are. Yeah. Oh, one of the things about oh, quarantine is I don't like it. Wait. It's a movie thing. Jen is really, really good at what she does. My mom but is I'm on. <laughs> not Zoom. Not a Zoom. I'm not a Zoomer. What's going on, Mama Dukes? My mama's on. I don't see your mom. Where's your mom? She's the I'm first one, Marilena Arias. Oh, she's there. I, I just, I'm keeping I'm everybody mom. muted other than oh, the panel because we're already mom. a lot of us. Hello, mom. No, you're muted. I bet mom is better at this than I am. And our host is not here. Nope. He just logged on. He's logging on. I see him. Oh, you're going to take a picture of me and then take a picture of you. Wait, who took pictures? Mom, you're texting me. I can't answer you right now. I love you, though. <laughs> What's up, everyone? <laughs> What's up, Andy? What's going on, Andrea? Oh. You got the mustard yellow memo. I like yes, that. Yes, I did. Is this like a how-to guy's <laughs> shirt that I, that I don't have, like the polo? I wore blue. It is. Hey, what's up, girl? I work. Alma, what's I up? Hey. Hello, baby. How are you? Wait, William, bro, ta perdido. You talk to Mike, but you don't talk to me, bro? Because I'm not can, a coach? Can Willie turn no. on his lights? Oh, you Okay, can. I'm no one. I'm just no one. Okay, oh, stop no, delivering over here. What's up, Alma? What's up, Jen? What's up, everybody? That's my door. Almita, estás ahí comodita? Sí, mi amor, estoy aquí comodita porque tengo que conectarme al cell phone because I need to leave in a moment. So. Margaret, come. Look who I'm on a panel with. Look at this. Look at everybody. There's I don't think. We're all trying. Hi, to... hi guys. Hey, what's going on? Hi. Is that Mark? Yeah, I'm crashing your party. And <laughs> I am I am hustling. I am working. I'm getting it real done. Good. <laughs> Another day. I'm just going to survive. You know. <laughs> See you all. Oh, my little Jennifer. My and little Jennifer. Jennifer. <laughs> you guys have yeah. all been replaced. 
Don't what? say that, okay? Look, look, look at look her face. Who was your name? <laughs> She's probably. <laughs> Don't make me mad. <laughs> we love you guys. You might get jelly. <laughs> what do I need? Yeah. It looks better. You, All right, I'm back. Not, it, lo it, it literally looks like really bright in here. I know I did. Well, I was going to do Aqualina there and then I will switch to here. How come I can't see everyone? Why can't you see everyone? <laughs> so long that I can't see everyone, mission. Click I on the freaking it. grid. I did click on the grid and it just goes to full screen. So it goes to full screen and you should be able to see everybody. Yeah. But what a panel we are, guys. This is going to be great. <laughs> You yeah, know, I wonder if everybody's fun. ready for this. This is a reality TV show. This is like this a reality TV show. <laughs> We're getting real, people. This is real deal. No fluff. This is real. Hey, May. Hey, May. Watch out. Your... Wait, I'm driving. Stop. You're right. You're right. <laughs> and I actually did it. <laughs> you did do it. I, that's what I know because I couldn't see. <laughs> Jen, try looking like on the corner in the side for like a, little, like a little, like a little square. I'm on, I'm, on, I'm on a desktop. Like, it, yeah, it should be, it should be on there. I should have done it from my phone. You can't see anybody, Jen? No, only one person talks. Get in and out. You oh, have to click on see. those dots. I'm going to get on my phone. Yeah, there's still time. There's about like three minutes. So what are we, what are we talking about today again? I forgot. I have no look idea. At, look, I'm winging this. <laughs> look at our guest faces with Jen's situation. I love your faces, guys. <laughs> I know my facial expressions are. I'm too transparent. <laughs> she is. I am not. I have the best poker face ever. No, you don't. <laughs> I see <it> right now. <laughs> Trust me, like. The, or the organizational part of me is like, Andy, you don't know the exact questions you're going to ask people and get everything going. I'm like so structured with some things. I'm like, okay, but eh, what's going to happen? And here we are like, Andy, we're just going to wing it. Calm your ass. Yeah, no one's going to pay attention to your questions. My answer to Andy, Andy. I'll just do we're going to do what we want anyway. That is so true. You guys do what you want anyway. That is true. That is true too. <laughs> yeah, you know we will. Oh. I'm going to get to it. That is True too, anyways. But um, but guys, like we already spoke about, as we can tell already, what happened with Alma's life and everything. Like, as as positive, I think there's a reason why I talk to all of you guys pretty periodically when it comes to real estate. We have pretty much we have a very high optimistic. It's called the optimism bias, which is also a weakness. I think that we all share because we're so optimistic that sometimes the reality and the actual looking at things can kind of be tainted and you kind of don't realize what's happening and not happening. And I think a lot of realtors need to need to hear this, right? Where like things are just not going so well, but more than that, like just honoring that life can suck sometimes, but there is light at the end of the tunnel, right? Um, so the goal of this, I want realtors to just agents to look at this and go, oh my gosh, these are people who are heavy hitters in their industry and they have the same problems I do, but yet they're still able to be something with this, right? This story, and Andrina, I always forget all the time, the, the title you said, is this your, your excuse or your... Is this your reason or your excuse? Perfect, which I love it. So that's, that's like the theme of what we want to harp on. So be as real as possible, but at the same time, also <laughs> give the hope that, hey guys, we all got problems and it's not, and, and Alma, you, you can talk about, like, People are killing themselves. Literally, people are fucking dying, right? Like this is an actual problem, um, but it doesn't have to get to that point, right? This is why we want to create a platform where if they want to reach out to us individually and talk to us on how we got through things, because someone's going to connect with my story, with Jenny's story, with Alma's story, and then they're going to want to reach out to us. Like we're going to give hope on today's Q&A. Someone's going to go, wow, you're right. Like, I don't have my shit together. Shit at home is all, like me, me, I got my mom and dad at home, guys. And I'm just like, I want to just like, and they don't, and it's, I want to go crazy. Like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Like, what's going on? And it's like, it's real shit, right? You guys got kids at home or whatever. So, um, but we're making it happen regardless. 
So that's what we really want to just kind of. Am I the only one in an office? Um, in an actual yeah. office. Apparently. Yeah. You are. I've been back in an home? office full time since May 18th. Really? I go three, four right. times a week. Relax. Well, if this no. makes you feel better, I'm in an office all the time except for today. But you know why? It's the situation I know I'm why. going through, and that is the only reason I'm at home today. But normally, I'm, I've been I've been working since May, I believe May the twentieth or something like that. Yeah. I mean, way, working. I I, I never stop working. Working at the office. I haven't worked in an office in years. You guys, by the way, you guys all know Alma, right? I think you know. Have you guys formally been introduced yet? Well, I think except I know. for Andreina, I met all of them. Andreina? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we got so we got yeah Jenny and May with new world title. William, I still don't know what he does. He could be a drug lord or he could be the best real estate uh, MLO that I know. I still don't know yet. So we'll figure it out. But um, but yeah, I, I don't know if everyone was connected or not. I'm not the one that plays golf all the time. That is true. That is true. You just look like the drug lord. I am the drug lord. That's it. And I pimp all of you. The what? So we're good. Yeah. And yeah. you run all of us. And, and Alma and Andarina is the one that tells us all what to do. Cause... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So yeah, so Alma, me and, me and Andarina, we know each other since high school. Um, we've known each other for a while. And then- and Willie too, that way. I've known Willie That's since right. high school. And then years ago when I decided to take my messaging to real estate agents, she was a big catalyst in getting me into this market. And just like you, Alma, you have definitely catapulted me as well with your connections as well in meeting so many people. So there's a lot of us here that are connected in different ways. So I'm glad I'm able to bring you all together. It's yeah, because Alma's been a big thank you. push. Yeah, big push in my business as well. So it's awesome. I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick, guys. Do we have time or no? Guys, it's 11.02. You're two minutes into it, but I guess go real quick because... Oh. Sorry, not fine. Don't worry about it. Go ahead. I'm good. Let's go. Put them in. Well, actually, you are the one who has to go again. I mean, go to the bathroom, uh, Andy. Go, go. Right. We'll wait well, for you. Like people in. start coming in. I guess we'll start in three minutes. We'll do an 11.05 just to give more people to come in. You have and, one minute, and... Andy. <laughs> Make it count, Andy. Make it count. <laughs> Make sure you put down the top after. <laughs> Good morning to everybody joining us. I am so sorry for what you're about to experience. <laughs> <laughs> She's even worse than me. And this <laughs> thing were very entertaining. Hello? But it's real. It's real life. Hello? Real talk. Unfiltered. She's actually That's picking up like the it. phone. Hello? It's my daughter. Hello? Well, I'm saying it's real. I'm not criticizing it's real. Hello? So end of the month has been crazy, right? Or what? No, he has no oh more. Him the what other do you, what do you mean the month? The year has been crazy. The, <laughs> no, yes. like the, the yeah. amount of business that's coming in. It's it's insane. A How lot of people business. Are buying yes. contracts, property, uh, properties are flying out of the market. Um, the competition Sorry. is so crazy. Uh, turn times on underwriting and everything, they start getting worse. We're seeing my turn time was 24 hours. We're like at 48 hours, which is every time we submit a file. And we're predicting, wow. like in 2015, uh, two-week turnaround times on simple oh, things. God. Because of the amount of volume that everybody's submitting. Imagine the big banks. You're going to see big wow. banks are going to delay two months and three months closings now. Well, you guys, the lenders see it before us because you guys are seeing the pre-calls, you know. So you guys, lenders can predict it better than, obviously, title because we'll get it when they have a contract. So that's music to my ears, Will. Yeah, I kind of love that. Love hearing those kind of stats. That's awesome. It makes yeah. Jen and I very, very happy. <laughs> I like it. Oh, and he's back. Okay. Let's do this, baby. Go. He's ready to do it? How do we? All right. Do I just, do we press a button or something, Andrina? What do we do? I think she already did. I see oh. more people in. Yeah. Awesome. And there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a chat, right? Yeah. You have yes, one minute. Yes, yes. We said we were starting eleven oh five, so okay. One more minute and go. One more minute. I like this. Okay, good. So hey everyone. Okay, good. Thanks for joining everybody. So we're gonna get started in just about another sixty seconds. We're gonna get going. So we are excited here, getting ready. Um, Brandy's on. What's going on, Brandy? Love seeing her. Love seeing her name on the screen. So glad everyone was able to make it. We are going to be talking today 
Uh, we're going to get real. So if you have kids around, be careful because you have a high percentage chance of swear <laughs> words. Of swear words. It's a dirty drunk. mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we are. Yeah. But, um, but as successful as we are what makes us the best I think is the authenticity of this group right we say it like it is and that's why I invited all of you guys to be a part of this so agents you guys are in for a treat today we're going to talk about the highs the lows the sideways the journeys professionally spiritually physically and it's going to be great so hold on tight hold on tight <laughs> I've been, it's great May. May I like the dedication May <laughs> you have the car. <laughs> you see that? That's it. Real life, man. I'm hustling. Yeah. Can't stop, Real. won't stop. Not at all. So I got, got, my, got my mask. Jen, so, so. you're on mute. Oh, now you're muting. not on mute. Don't be muting me, hello. I have a lot to say. <laughs> 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 oh, look, I get to see everyone else's faces. Leslie, how you doing? Okay. How did you do that? I want to do that. LC, what's up, LC? How are you? This is what I wanted to see. I want to How see. How do you see everybody's faces? How do you see that? How do you do that? I press gallery. I press gallery on the screen. Odette, well, you're. Oh, I thought I thought it was a real person. It's her image. Odette Brandy's your image. Hello, Brandy. Leslie, how are you, Leslie? And LC, thanks for being brave and showing your faces because. I miss the the day to day interactions. By the way, so. I never show my face on Zooms. You don't? No, oh, this is great. No, that's right. Letty Oliver, Letty, it's a picture. I want to see live faces. If you guys can yes. pop your faces up, I want to see faces. And so you know, everyone attending, Letty, how are you? Oh, Maria, Maria, I'm gonna send you an email. By the way, I have some updates for you, which you're gonna love. It's good. So guys, good. I want to see your faces. And our audience will have time at the end to ask questions as well. I'm going to have you guys asking questions. Hey, Brandy. What's going hey, on, girl? Brandy. Awesome. Perfect. All right, good. All right, guys. So let's I go ahead. I wonder if you're asking for people's faces and they're like running like, oh, my yeah. God. Get your hair did, guys. Did I have to do my hair. Hey, me and you. Hair, me and William. <laughs> yeah, I, I, Andy, Andy, you don't do that on this time. I mean, you don't force people to show their faces on webinars. Yeah. Guys, I, I miss I miss live events and live my live presentation. Yeah, me too. Oh my God, me too. I miss that so much. I never thought I was gonna miss it as much as I'm missing it. Yeah, Jen, I when can attest to that. Queen, Jen completely misses, completely misses really? live training. <laughs> I miss hugging people. I miss kissing people on the cheek. Me too. I know. <laughs> I miss girls getting awkward around me when I hug them. Like, why are you hugging me? <laughs> Come on. Now girls have an excuse not You're to so hug you anymore. Damn. Oh, my God. Now they have an actual I've been excuse. weird hugging you for like 20 years. Like, all right, Andy. Oh, <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, everybody. Thank you for coming on right now as you guys come in. So for those of you that do not know, do not know who I am, my name is Andy Rosas and I am the co-founder of the How To Guys. And what we do is we teach real estate agents habits. We are the habit experts. And I brought on a beautiful panel here today, which I'm just gonna have them go around and quickly introduce themselves. But really quickly, I brought them on because in the real estate space, I'm hearing success stories, I'm hearing horror stories, and I'm hearing personal success stories, personal horror stories. And sometimes I think the media just puts out whatever it wants to in the sense of, oh, look, housing market is doing this and it's not really doing that or everyone's doing this, right? And not really people are doing that. So the purpose of this Zoom, of this meeting was, we're gonna tell you guys, not only how are we dealing with the COVID, with the virus in our business, but also how are we dealing with it in our personal life, okay? Because the thing about being a real estate agent is if your personal life sucks, your business life is going to suck, right? So that's why we wanna make sure we address the personal issues, get some questions, and then we're gonna open it up to every single one of you all after. Um, also stick around because I'm gonna give everyone um, access to a free morning routine. So if your morning is struggling, don't worry, I'm gonna give you a top producer, actually I think half of the panel here today uses the content that we use and give out to help you change your habits. So we're gonna give that as a freebie today, right? So I'm gonna work the room around, and I guess Andreina, since you're wearing yellow like I am, you can introduce yourself and then we'll just work it around. 
All right, I am Andreina Monserrate, and I'm a go-to for knowledge for realtors. And I currently took on the position of Vice President of Business Development for Brokers LLC. Nice, nice, nice. Next on deck, Jen. Let's go, Jen. She's muted. Oh, she's Again. on mute, though. She's on mute. Damn it. She loves this. I mean, she just said it, and we were practicing, too. Okay, go ahead. Go, Jen. Hi, I'm Jennifer Arcañaraz. Everybody knows me as Jen. I'm with New World Title, and I work at New World Title, and I'm awesome. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't ready. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm one That's of the it. everybody I think knows who I am by now. <laughs> I'm the loud mouth. Good. Excellent. And uh, now, William, you're on deck. He's muted as well. Did it on purpose so you guys don't hear me. Got it. All right, so I, nobody knows me. I'm a little lender in Miami, and I try to help help you guys out, mostly agents. Why are you laughing? <laughs> um, with obviously solving the difficult cases, but mostly I'm here because I actually prospect like most of you guys do, and I'm here to help you guys out. Beautiful. And then May? She's muted. Is she muted? May, you have to unmute and introduce yourself. This is, this is interesting. She's on, yeah, all right, or, or Alma, whoever unmuted I, her. I unmuted her. Alma's muted too. There you go, okay, there you I am go. unmuted. Sorry guys, I was trying to unmute myself and I couldn't. No so problem. my name is Meili Montelongo. I am a licensed title agent with New World Title. Um, I work alongside Jen, so Jen and I like to consider ourselves sisters and partners um, for New World Title. And our goal really is to help agents grow their business, close their business, get their deals from, from contract to closing, um, answer any questions. And there's a lot of moving pieces in the closing, in the closing process. So that's what we're here for. Our job is to, to put the pieces together, walk everyone through each of the pieces and try to ease the process. So that's what I do. Awesome. And then Alma. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Hi everyone, my name is Alma Betancourt. I believe mean, most of you know me. I'm a real estate broker. I've been a realtor for the past 10 years and a broker for the past four years. And um, I'm one of those really passionate about real estate. And more than real estate, I truly believe in leadership and marketing. I'm pretty sure most of you will agree with me that real estate is not about selling houses. Real estate is about selling an idea, selling ourselves selling um, our way to do business and here I am I'm trying I try to help not only customers but agents to develop a successful business and a successful life and by the way and thanks to Andy and this is not appreciate to the host but thanks to Andy developing new habits it's definitely a huge has made a huge impact in my life and my career awesome love hearing it you guys know the key to my heart you say that H word Love it. All righty, guys. So we're going to start it off. Um, May, I think um, it would be great to start talking about, listen, we're in quarantine right now. Um, a lot of buyers and sellers have questions about what's going to happen, what's not going to happen. And I think what we should start talking about is this, is about, okay, what do I say to people now when I'm prospecting, right? What am I saying to people when I'm on the phone with them and they have questions about uncertainty in the economy, um, and, or maybe if you don't feel like prospecting may in this time, cause you feel like yourself as an agent or as a prospector in general, you're like, Oh my gosh, like, should I be calling people? Should I not? So may from a prospecting perspective, what type of communication are you giving to people when you're talking to them? What's helping you out? And then I'm going to ask also the other in individual panels about this as well. Cause I think a lot of people need to hear this from a prospecting perspective, especially what's happening today. Yeah. So Andy, um we're in sales. We never stop prospecting. Um, if you're stopping prospecting, yes. you're really doing an injustice to your business. And Correct. even though it's very difficult, sometimes at least for me, it was difficult to kind of take a step back in prospecting and not be so pushy and so salesy. What worked is the idea, the ideology that this is a business relationship. So just shooting out a text message, calling your database and saying, hey, what's going on? How are you? How are you holding up? Is there anything that I can do for you? You know, listen, I know that you may feel that the market is a little uneasy right now, but here's some stats that just pulled up yesterday, this week. Um, 
So you're giving them data. Reports. So good. So you're, you're going to that call with data. some data in hand, right? Okay. Going to the call with data okay. and, and just kind of being there for, for your database. It's not so much right now, you know, seize the day, carb diem, go in for the sale, go in for the hard close. Right now, it's more of being genuine, being there to, to help them. And again, guys, sales is a business relationship. People are going to do business with you because they like you and trust you. If you're out there just trying to get that listing or get that deal and you're not coming in in a genuine manner, you may just lose the client because guess what? Another agent may come in there and saying, hey, you know, I just wanted to see how everything is coming along. Do you need anything? Do you need water? Do you need toilet paper? Do you need wipes? You know, whatever the case may be, um, just coming in, in in a genuine form and building and nurturing that relationship. Making Truth the really connection. Something yeah. Something that had... Is she breaking up, by the way? She's or... frozen. Maybe the and what has what has emphatically oh i'm frozen you were andrina, <laughs> andrina what were you saying you can pick it up for her what were you saying andrina um you know has somebody who's been um consulting and training realtors for a while when this thing first started the first thing i said was don't you dare stop the city might be on lockdown but i need you to if you were making five calls before i need you to make 500 now you're at home yeah. on the dialer and don't go for the sale. So I'm very much like Meiling. I told all of them, do not go for the sale, make that connection. So when the city lifts up, you've been talking to all these people and planted the seed on buying as soon as we open up. And the agents that I have seen that were prospecting consistently through the, the lockdown and through the quarantine right now have at least three deals on lockdown. Yeah, I want to yeah. jump in there because um, Andrina, we're part of the same, you know, meetings at the beginning of this. We were saying the same things to everybody. Yes. And some people completely maybe ignored it. And it was such a crazy, crazy result that we actually saw it, that everybody who stayed on their prospecting, like I and like Maylin said, we changed what we talked about. But we saw the results. Everybody mm -hmm. who stayed constantly grinding throughout the, the, the COVID-19, like hard times, saw the results now. I'm seeing the results now. But it's yeah. touching on what Maylin said and what everybody, I guess the reason we're here is, guys, it's not even about the sale. It's not even about just being there to help somebody. You're helping them by doing a positive message. If you're reaching out to people and you're saying, hey, how are you doing? You know, yeah, I know it's not the time to buy, but I'm just touching base, you know, and make sure you pass off the positive message. Because if you're just going to be like, yeah, no, this is horrible. This is so horrible and be so negative. You're not doing anybody a favor. I found myself being a positive light when I spoke to people has generated people to reach out to me. When people felt positive, they felt more motivated to obviously to buy when things got back and um, and just to get them away from whatever negative status they're in. Some people are home alone dealing with this. Some people are home with another negative part, person dealing with this. So you need to be that, that positive light. So you're gonna be just prospecting to spread the message, the positive message, that will make a change. Willie and I were literally in the Basically the connecting with all the realtors, telling them the exact same message. Yeah, and you know, I, would love, I would love to jump on that because one of the things that I've seen during this, I totally agree with all of you, and Maylene, you're totally right, prospect, if we don't prospect, we just don't work, period. I mean, it's it's our base. But I would like to transmit a message, to, to, to give a message to some of the agents. I, I would say a lot of agents out there. I have received calls from different agents telling me, oh my, what's going on? I hear people telling me that they haven't stopped working, that they work it's better than ever, that they are doing great things, but nothing is happening this way. Nothing is happening for me. And I just want to let them know it's okay. I mean, you don't, you don't quit. You have to keep going for your, for your own good, for your uh, health, your mental health, for your business. But if nothing is happening your way, it's okay. I, I, I can tell you, a lot of those people out there saying that they haven't stopped working or, or even the best one, the one that I like the most. No, no, my business now, it's even better. I'm pretty sure the business is even better for a lot of people out there, but that's not the reality in general. So don't feel bad because I've heard people really depressed because they feel bad because their business is not working. Their business are, is dying when they see other agents constantly saying, oh no, I'm doing better than ever, I'm doing fantastic. So they wonder, what am I doing wrong? It's not that they're doing something wrong, 
it's maybe that they are working harder and their priorities, which might be their family, their relatives, or as a sick person, something like that. It's not that they're doing something wrong, but it's about taking little steps to improve whatever they do, they're doing. Perfect. But I was just about to say, say that, Alma. Can I jump in there? Can I jump in there? Jen, Jen, go ahead. Okay. So I agree with all of you, and yes, it's a human touch. And I agree with Alma 110% because I've been getting calls. Yes, there are agents that I haven't stopped working. Uh, we've been super busy I and mean, we're title mailing can attest to that. Uh, we're actually busier than ever and that's great. But I do get calls from other realtors um, giving me the opposite. And I have called and then some realtors, oh my God, I'm super busy. I'm working with three and four buyers at, the, at this time, blah, blah, blah. But then I have people calling me, what do I do, Jen? I don't know what to do. And I'm like, reach out to your database, your past clients. I'm telling them all that and they're suffering. And it does, believe it or not, when you don't have a purpose, you can fall into depression. Correct. It happens to the best of us. I'm a very systematic, routine person, and I don't react good to change. And like Rudy always tells us, adapt and overcome. Adapt and overcome. There's always a solution. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. The glass can always be half full, but not like that. So it is important to reach out to your friends, family, database, past clients, because not everybody is doing good. And I talked to many realtors because during quarantine, I was calling my past agents and some were, were down. I'm not, I mean, they were like really sad and I don't know what to do. And some were even terrified. They didn't even want to leave their houses, you know, with immune um, deficiency issues. And it's not that they don't want to work or they don't want to get out there. They do, but I guess the mindset messes you up because we're all human. You know, I don't wake up motivated and positive every, every day. Yeah, I mean, let's get yeah. real. I have to call me Lee sometimes. And me and my Lee are like, wah, 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 you know? But and then we call Mama Duke. She's done. She's done. You know, so it's important just to stay in touch. And exactly, don't go for the sale. So a agents, as you're listening to this, listen, you can never control the outcomes of your actions, <laughs> right? You can never control the closings. You can't. There's so many things, so many variables that happen. So now with COVID, what I'm seeing is instead of focusing on those deals that we're closing, yes, maybe you're not closing as much, just stay focused on the activities of prospecting. And by the way, prospecting has many different shapes, guys. It can be DMing. I have some of my students that go, Andy, I don't want to talk to people because I'm not in a good mood. So I don't want to talk to somebody. Okay, fine. So DM them, message them, text message them, you know, um, if you need help with it, just copy and paste someone's template, right? And send it out there. Like William said, just be that positivity, that connection to somebody, be out there because if not, someone's gonna feel like, well, you weren't there, you know, you gotta be top of mind. But also it's readjusting your expectations as an agent that maybe closings may not happen as much, but if you're not taking those small little steps of texting or calling, then it's just gonna snowball for you because you'll be out of integrity with it. So yeah, no, really good points there. Sometimes, sometimes you know, I sometimes sorry. look for little funny memes and yeah. I'll text the little memes, like a little joke. Oh, really? Or, hey, yeah. you're the bomb, or like, you know, you know me, I'm the funny one. I so like I do that, okay. or if I see an article that, that's a positive article about market, I'll send it to me, hey, can you hear this? Especially if it's like a realtor that works homestead. Because remember, I'm sales, it's just a, my market is different than a realtor. You guys, your sales are buyers and sellers. My clients are realtors and lenders. So I'll send them information that I see or I pick up. That's a good article. Oh, look what I found. In that, and I know that they work that area. Or little funny memes. It helps. It puts a smile on people's faces. The funny memes. I, like that. That. I, I, I want to jump in because I know that we're saying, like, um, it's okay. You know, it, you know, reality is it's okay for an agent to be down. And it's okay for them to feel, you know, um, that this entirely, you know, their world has changed and it's upside down and, and, and then their feelings, right? But with that same token, I want them to, to know, I think that we were all scared, you know, financially, we didn't know what was going to happen. Um, were we going to be able to go back outside? I think that we were all scared in many different ways. I know that some of us suffer from anxiety. I know that some of us had kids at home. How am I going to be able to leave them? How am I going to come back? But I, I do want to speak for, at least from my experience, right, that no matter how scared I was and no matter how stressed and how anxious I was, I woke up at the, you know, 
at the time that I needed to wake up. I was on Zooms. I was with agents constantly. I was with you guys on Zooms. I was, con I was consistently on top of my game. I think I was more engaged than ever. I met more people than ever. My networking was insane. I was still scared, but I was still kind of like trying to get the work done. And while everybody was very, I mean, I was scared financially, like you wouldn't believe I had to break a partnership that was not working. I went back into an office and got a full-time position, a very nice position. I'm very, you know, I'm very proud of the position that I received, but I don't think that I would be in this position if I wouldn't have done the work in the last two and a half months. Cause the broker that I'm with Claudia Serna, I had never even met her. You know, I, I knew the company, I knew that their logo, but I had never met her. And the only reason why I am where I am right now today in, in this beautiful office is because I busted my ass no matter what my train of thought was, no matter what my anxiety said to me, no matter what, I consistently stayed up on my game more than ever. I think I have never been more productive than I was those last few I, 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 I saw you all. But then again, but then again, I think, I'm not even happy to you, but my message was about we go with situations in totally different ways. Yeah. We, we can do the same thing. And I'm glad it worked for you that way. And congratulations, by the way, because it did amazing. It worked for me in a way, not that way that it worked for you, but for me it worked. But what I, my message is about those agents that are feeling frustrated, that I feel it, that are feeling a, a big anxiety because they feel they didn't do anything good during the quarantine because they did something wrong. And it's not about doing something wrong. It's the way you cope yeah. with different situations. Uh, some people took the advantage of those two, uh, two months or two and a half months to work on the hobbies they will love to have and they didn't have the time to do it while they were practicing real estate 110% of the time. And that's a great thing too. So th th there are different ways to cope with situations. Yours was totally a workaholic oh. product which it's amazing. Yeah, everybody knows that that's, I mean, that's me to begin exactly. with, right? Because that's part, of, we don't know each other. I know I'm knowing yeah. you today, but I can tell that's part of your personality. But my concern and my message is to those agents that felt that they fail their career and themselves because they didn't do as good as others were uh, uh, preaching that they were doing. I, I, I went to, uh, I went to little ones, I mean, just a few webinars or, or, online classes because the few I went I found in two of them a severe situation involving people that we consider leaders in our industry that's the reason we leaders have to be very careful with our words we have to be very very careful with our words and they were practically saying oh if you're not doing real estate if you're allowing one of your closest to to, to uh, go down then you don't know what you're doing a leader has to be very careful when a leader says that. But people like us, all of us speaking today, people, agents look up to us to look for an example to follow, to look for an idea, to look for an advice. When we open our mouths, we have to be really careful in what we say. And this is a specific meeting that I went, one of our major leaders in the industry said that this is the best time of, their life, of his life, that an agent made a question and he said, oh, really? Send it my way. I'll close it for you. We need to be careful. And I have my message to those agents that didn't get so good, it's they didn't do anything wrong. Real estate is a constant, constant working on prospecting, on ideas, on marketing campaigns, on strategies. It's a never ending job. But the quarantine took a huge impact in all of us. It's an unprecedented situation for real. It's not a cliche. I know the word has been repeated a million times, but it's a reality. And we need to be consistent and we need to be careful and we need to care about those that didn't do as good as maybe we did. That's Absolutely. my concern and my message to all those agents. The, everything is right. Your business is gonna be okay. You might need to work a little harder from now on, mm -hmm. but you're gonna come back. No, that's huge. So brokers, leaders in the space, if you, just be open and be careful with the words you're using, Alma, right? Like just be, yeah, definitely. Like, right? And just be open and it's okay, guys. Like, listen, I'm the, the motivational speaker stigma. Guys, 
there's times it just sucks for me, guys. And we got to be open with it. And I, know, and I know social media doesn't do a good job. So that's why I'm glad, Alma, you're bringing in that side as well. Like, guys, some of us are not dealing with it well, right? There were some issues I was having with my dad that it was just bringing me down emotionally. So I think it's okay for agents just to first experience it and be okay with that, right? And also talk to other people about it. So brokers, leadership roles, be very conscious of how we're coaching our team and be open to feedback and also open up sessions to your team to talk to you one-on-one if they have any personal issues that they would like to talk to. And I'll invite any one of you, my panel, I'll invite anyone listening, same thing with me. I'll put my cell phone number down if you want to talk to me about something or whatever it is, because you need to have an outlet of expression that things are not going well. And I think every one of us to know that we're here for you, right? We can just talk to each other and we're all well connected. So if you're missing something from a business perspective, we can connect you with somebody, yeah. right? So don't, don't call Andy though. He won't stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> Let me add something. I think also we're, we are creatures of habits. So, and some people don't react well with change, especially when you're used to doing something for like a certain period of time and you're used to your routine and then all of a sudden now your routine has completely changed. And that's kind of hard. I myself picked up some bad habits. I used to, I have a system in place and it works for me and it was great and everything was awesome, you know, but guess what? Now I don't check my calendar as much as I used to because I feel like there's something in there and it's bad because there's things in there. I had a doctor appointment the other day. I got there late because I didn't look at the calendar and I live by my calendar. So believe it or not, little things. So it's just, we need to be there for each other, I think, and help each other and give each other ideas. At the end of the day, it's okay. If you didn't do good during quarantine or you slacked or you just took time off or you worked on your hobby. It's okay. Guess what? Today's a new day and it's a new day and you can just get better. Every day you just gotta do better and get better and just change your mindset. But it's very hard to be self-employed because as you know, realtors, us, we have to wake up every day and invent our job. We have to figure out where we're going to find the work. And that's not easy. It's not like going into an office 9 to 5 and you know exactly what you have to do. So I can see how people can get lost. I got lost there for a little bit too. There was two weeks there that I was even kind of like sad, like not motivated at all. I love so, the way you have admitted to all of us that you pick some really bad habits and you need to work on them. I love that. I no, no. I'm trying to correct it now, but, but it's like when you go to the gym, you, for instance, I stopped going to the gym. If, if everybody knows me, I'm a gym aholic. I've been going to the gym since I was 16. This was the longest period of time that I hadn't been going to the gym. It was like three months. I don't think I've ever gone three or four months without going to the gym. And now I'm trying to get back into the routine, and it's hard. It's easier, it's easier to fall off the wagon than to get back on. Absolutely. Yeah. My, my issue was, guys, alcohol. There was like a two week time frame with alcohol oh to me. Yeah. Well, no, I believe we all suffer from that. No, but guys, I think, honest, but, I think no, Willie it, it was, was a witness sad. that I was probably drunk every day that first month. I was drinking every day. It was. It got to a point that I got disgusted by alcohol. No, no me and, too. Andy made me drive to his house to take him a tea. Was it ice? What you're like? Oh, Ever? oh yes, yeah. that's right. You came over. Ice. The worst. The, I think all of us have picked up some bad habits, bad. and I can tell you. A bad habit I definitely picked up was walking to my mom's house and it got to a point that I stopped buying wine and started stealing her wine. <laughs> but it was just one of those things where you're like, what? It's 3.30? It's wine time. Let's go. Going to mom's house. Send me her like, address. It's Monday at 5 o'clock and it was pretty really like, all right, let's go. I was baking like crazy. I felt I, I literally could have done like a baking show. Oh my god. Andy had pumpkin pie. Um, no, but yes, I, I came by your house to... and got pumpkin pie. That's right. Thank you. My parents loved it. They loved it. Uh, loved I it. wanted to talk about a little bit. So I'm gonna coach you. Guys, program. for whatever reason, I don't know. I lost sound, so bear with me one second. It's true. I uh, I'm on the coaching program and everybody that knows me, I'm I take a lot of action. I'm an action, action, action. Like you tell me to do something, I'm Which gonna coaching program are you in, Will? <laughs> Mike. I'm in the how to guys with Mike. <laughs> Not with Andy. Not with Andy. <laughs> Not Mike. Andy. Mike does our coaching. Exactly. So, um, but, you know, when this started, at the beginning, I was a very hyper, very go, go, go person. And I was still pushing through. And, and Andrea is my witness. My, my conference call, my team meetings, every agent I was speaking to, I was pushing and motivating them. Call, call, call. I was being super aggressive. I, myself, 
my routine fell down, you know? Yeah. Um, I noticed that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so I went back to my default, which, which is what Mike says. He, he's like, I just went to back to just action. I wasn't organizing myself. I wasn't planning. I was just, you know, handling, I was reacting to everything. Right. So it was my biggest issue was that I lost my organization. I lost my structure. So he kind of brought it back to, for me to view that I can't control my results, which is going back to what we're all talking, you know, whether you're a big success or you're not, whether you succeed at this, focus on what you can't control. He brought me back down to say, Hey, look, if it takes you, if it used to take you maybe 10 calls to get one deal or 10 agents to get one deal, then maybe you need to figure out how can you control maybe getting 20 agents. So we took it back down to like the bare, bare basics of prospecting, what I could control, how many calls can I make? If it takes me 300 calls to get one deal versus before you took me 30, then I went back to the basics and I organized myself in a way, well, Mike helped me organize myself in a way where I'm not looking at the results. And I gave myself a purpose, which wasn't result oriented. My purpose was just work oriented, just build up this part first. Whatever happens later, it's going to happen one way or the other. So that was something that helped me out a lot. Um, I could tell you from, I have a I have follow up boss. I have a CRM that I use it to track my deals. And um, I started seeing my initial, like my, my pre-approved people. They're, they're like, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to buy right now. I'm going to buy maybe three, four, four. Let me see what the market happens or let me see next year, whatever. Oh yeah. But that nearly tripled. And it's what's yielding me a lot of business now because not because they closed because I met them, I helped them. And even though I told them, okay, that's fine. We'll get ready for next year. They recommended me somebody else. So he brought me back down to the basics. Like, Hey, don't focus on the results. Just focus on what you can control. You can make a phone call. You can speak to your current agents. You can speak to your title company. How many times do I not speak to uh, Andreina? How many times do I speak to, to Jen about situations to try to find ideas? So I was able to control that. And that's the message I'm trying to say. What I learned from the coaching program during this time is I can't control the results. I can't control me, myself, making, up an extra, making that extra phone call or picking up that phone call or servicing that person. And you, you know, also, I, I'm also... To touch on what Will said, that's good that I told you that, and thanks, because those are some good tips. Um, but yeah, I noticed that I was always busy, but not productive. Because there's a difference between being busy and being productive. So yeah, I was always busy, and I was working my hours like usual, and I felt accomplished because I wasn't just hanging out of my house, watching TV on the couch, because I would get super depressed if I would do that. But I felt like if it was... At the end, I was like, okay, what did I get? At, what was my result? Nothing. It was just busy work. I was just answering emails and being busy and not really being productive. And I noticed I was doing that. And like what we were saying, there was no result because I wasn't being productive. I was just being busy. Yeah, we got to be okay. careful with that, right? Busy and building. Like Usually human nature is to do the easiest task because if it requires less mental effort, our brain says, let's do the easy stuff first. So you have to be careful, right? That's why just buying the workout equipment, looking at, at YouTube videos, doing the easy stuff doesn't replace actually going to the damn gym. So I looked at my, I looked at the workout equipment. I was having coffee on my couch every morning. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> the Look at the result. The oh. result. <laughs> You know that I found a situation, I, I found a few agents, and by the way, well, uh, now that you mentioned sitting on the couch and watching YouTube, I don't know, uh, I found agents telling me, you know, at the beginning we talk about keep educating yourself, go to webinars, go to Zoom, Zoom classes, and I found many agents telling me, you know what, Alma, um, I'm not going to any other Zoom class, I'm not going to any other webinar. And when I asked why, I remember Andy, we talk about this, and I, I, I felt them. I, I could feel what they meant, and they were telling me I'm not because it brings a negative reaction in their attitude towards that class, or towards real estate in general. I have agents uh, that feel that they will stay the rest of their lives, starting from. Um, a, dis a distance webinar because of the social distancing and it brings a negative feeling and a negative um, uh, I don't know a negative memory 
in their situation and they just want to go back live they just want to go back to the live classes and seminars and they decided to move away they prefer to watch youtube no purpose whatsoever something entertaining something that takes them out of the reality instead of going to a webinar and take advantage of a class and you know what for a, a few days i felt what they felt and I stopped giving classes to my agents. I stopped mentoring my agents and I stopped educating my agents. Well, that's big. I'm up for you to admit that being a broker. What that's you huge. started seeing um, was that agents were telling me that because there was so many Zooms and there were so many webinars and it was all day long that they were no longer productive. So it made them even worse because they weren't scheduling their day right in order to like, okay, this one's important. This one's okay. Let me not watch this one. Let me only watch this one. I kept hearing like, they it's like they wanted to take everything they couldn't. Yeah. I yeah. think, I think too, I think too, um, when it comes to now these new changes and, and again, this is just, you know, real life talk and real life scenarios. There's a lot of trainings that were done in the past that perhaps would have made sense for agents to learn. But I think that if brokers and team leaders devy up or not devy up, I'm trying to find the right word. Um, just refresh their zooms to what's real life what's real now lead generating how do you lead generate online how do you prospect online how do you do virtual zoom I was doing like that I with think, exactly i think i think what agents need is more of all right how can i adjust my business and how can i survive in this market with these new changes you know i talked to some of my past clients that i've had for years i mean i've been in the title business Gosh, I don't even know what 20 years. I, I I mean, it was born in it. So I have a lot of clients that are in like the much older. They're the more seasoned, and and having conversations with them, you know, my heart goes out to them because they know nothing other than getting the yellow pages or you know going on and, and door knocking and doing flyers and making phone calls. So all of this to them is like, whoa, you know, like this is just way too much information for us to take. So. I think if brokers and team leaders really put the effort to put more emphasis and training on real life ways to build your business and props and prospects in this time will make a huge impact and more agents will want to attend and they'll find it more purposeful and they'll want to be on that zoom call. But if you're just going to do a, Hey, how do you do a listing agreement or, you know, a contract to closing <laughs> or how to draft the contract? I mean, uh, yeah. Over and over again. Yeah. Over no. and over again, it's repetitive. Well, they need new. No. Hello. I mean, Actually, people want to know. And people, with that. with people Willie, we were actually cold calling at a prospect. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were, we're, we were like on what the agents needed now. Uh, we did a weekly like, based on what's happening I now. I even pulled my ears a few times telling me that I wasn't doing my training. She, she was wasn't. Like, she was, and I'm not, I'm not as, I don't like, this adapting to what we're doing, I don't like. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I don't like it. I feel like I'm better in person. I can see people, unlike now, I can't see nobody. Um, so I don't, I'm the, the Zoom thing was horrible for me, like this. And I know that's the way we're going, and blah blah blah. I get it, but I just honestly, I still don't like it. I'm getting used to it now. I, I, just don't, I agree with you, I don't like it. But you're not know, a great way to, the way I found to cope with this, it's I decided to, of course, it's hard when you have over 300 agents. Me, it was not that big. We have over 65 agents and, mm -hmm. and not all of them go for training. And what I did is I invited to my house, come to my house, let's sit, let's have, let's have a cup of coffee. Yeah. I just moved to a beautiful, right, Maria Elena? I just lived, moved to a beautiful building in Ocean Drive. And I'm like, come here, let's watch the ocean. Let's. And I train you here, but it didn't work. They didn't go, wanted to go to those webinars. And I had my agents husband. at my house like every day. It was, it was. It is, yeah. I'm still going to my house. <laughs> oh yeah. By the way, funny yeah. thing, I have recruited agents coming to my house because they come with an agent friend from another company. I haven't taken an agent from any of you, by the way. <laughs> from another company. I need another company. Ah uh, yeah, I need another company, and I have recruited agents. Friends that have come with my friends, of course, I do my thermometer thing. I have done it. I have done my license spray thing. Oh my God, I almost choked one of them. I have done my license thing. I have done everything. 
I love it. Way, it's been way I, I was in closings and I've never had time to do I've never had time to go and do my own closings. Um because I was always so busy all over the place and I never had time to go do my realtor's closings and I've actually had time to do my realtor's closing, which is yeah. nice. You which know? is amazing. Because I get to I get to actually put the face the buyer's face with the name and I get to participate with the, oh, congratulations with the realtor. And that for me was a nice, ni a nice touch because I've never had time to actually do my own closing. So at least I've, I, I've been able to do that. So positive glass half full. So really quick, cause you guys know me, <laughs> I, I want to give like an actionable step going back to what you said, Andrena about um, prospecting and all this and like, we're busy, but we're not, here's what you're going to do guys is block off. I have a 90 minute time. I call it my P90, my prospecting 90 minutes. So I have a standing call with Mike every morning at 8 a.m., okay? When I'm done with that call with Mike, that's my trigger. That's it. All I'm doing for 90 minutes after that is prospecting. That's it, okay? So now a tip that I would give agents is, if you're busy, 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 what you wanna do is just dedicate 30 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever that is for you, that that is a non-negotiable time in your day. That's it. You don't set up meetings. You put it in your calendar. And you know when people try to get on your calendar, you go, I'm sorry. Like if you guys told me, Andy, at 10, at 10 o'clock, anything before 10 a.m., Andrina knows when she calls me, there are certain times I'm not going to pick up and I'm not going to talk oh, to her. Can, right? I'm, go I'm going through my morning routine. And part of that morning routine is I got a prospect. 90 minutes is the only way I'm going to drive my business forward, right? Everyone here in this chat, you guys are my warm pipeline, but I got to reach out to people that don't know me, right? So those 90 minutes are dedicated to that. So an actionable step for anyone listening to this is to give you that sense of I'm doing something with all this chaos is 30 minutes, 10 minutes even. And that's non-negotiable. Don't move it on your calendar. It cannot be done. If you need an accountability partner to check on you and you owe them money, if you don't do it to hold you more accountable or you have to wear a tuxedo to work because you have to have a penalty of some sort, do it. That's what I have with Mike, right? Then that's a non-negotiable time. And then what starts to happen is when you dedicate yourself to those 30 minutes or 10 minutes or 90 minutes of prospecting, anything else you do in the day, you'll feel better because you're like, at least I got prospecting done. And you feel an integrity with yourself. You're going to feel you're honoring yourself. You're going to feel happier about your work. And that's where you start to build more positive emotions. So that's a little takeaway nugget there. Because I know, Jen, you were talking about prospecting. Andreina, Will, you guys are prospecting. But make sure it's not a variable time in your day. Make sure you block it off. Same time, same place every single day or at least monday through friday because that's when i prospected monday through friday but Andy, on and, to, and to add to that there's something that my mom had told me on um, years ago when she put me out into the sales world and believe it or not every time i open up my calendar and my, and my agenda and i see it empty i swear it, i kid you not i hear her like in the back of my head saying if it's not on your calendar it doesn't exist yes it is like the yes. most yes. annoying words that yes. she the most annoying and and powerful and mom i love you but those will be forever the words yes. that i will remember you telling me is if it's not in your calendar, it doesn't exist. And it is so true. I mean, it's so habitual also that if I open up my agenda and I do not see that there is prospecting time, a meeting, a lunch, a drive by, a pop by, a closing, I literally start kind of like, oh my God, I have like nothing going on in my calendar. And it's wow. huge it's crazy. It's crazy. I am crazy. huge on agendas. If it's not written down, like you just said, it does not exist. Everybody knows I write everything down. And yeah. another quote, another quote is this, if you don't have a plan, you become part of somebody else's plan. Yeah. Cause, that means someone, yes. Cause that means someone's going to grab your attention and say, Hey, yeah. come here, do this. You're like, no, I can't. I'm sorry. I have this to do. But if you have, don't yeah. have those barriers, anyone can grab you and now, pull yeah. you into their agenda. Like writing notes. I am a big fan of the rocket. The oh, book. And oh, you is that the one you can write on? With, Those uh, ones you ride and then you wipe and you, and you wipe it, yeah. You yeah. Your Google Drive. Awesome. Like I no longer need sixteen notebooks. I just need one, guys. Like I, and I always tell people, you can't allow people because the one, the one thing that is the most valuable thing is time. 
that you cannot allow people to control your time. Like I tell my refs that all the time. They're like, oh, but I have a, I have an appointment, a doctor's appointment at 12. I go, okay, who made that doctor's appointment? I don't make doctor's appointment in the middle of the day. I go in the either in the morning or the last thing in the day because if not, it gets in between. I'm super anal. You know, I control my time. I control my schedule. I've had brokers tell me, hey, can you be here tomorrow at 9? I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I have something at that time, but I can accommodate Good. you at this time. It is what it Good. is. Good Unless job. it's you know, super like, yeah. important broker. Man. Sometimes, sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you have to do that because people will just come in and and not like in other words you have to respect your time and you have to respect your calendar and yeah. you have to allow other people to respect it the same if not they're going to walk all over you and every meeting every call every every activity you have in your calendar it means something and it's and it's meant to help you grow your business so you also have to be true and be faithful and respect your calendar and also kind of train and teach your, your your clients and your customers to say hey listen i may not be able to make it at 11 but can we push it for one or can we push it for three you know give them options Good. um great but job. stick to your calendar i think i think that's a huge thing too and it feels great right may that integrity of doing what you should be doing it does it does i i will be even more the day that i can do what my mom did with that that trump pen that says you're fired that would be great <laughs> <laughs> you're fired <laughs> you remember we get as agents you think you want to be accessible at all times but if you're always accessible to everyone else's agenda who's taking care of your agenda correct so I guess the, the point is that maybe there should be a different podcast or 30 minutes, something going back to the basics, from, especially from Andy, because I live by, so I live with something called Des, where I set up my day kind of like day by hour by hour, so I could allow time for me to work on my things and for me to kind of be open to other people's input. Obviously, things have changed in the market and more people want to connect with me now than ever. I have, well, the biggest change I saw in, in the, the corona time is, people want to hear my voice more than ever. Like people don't want to just text me anymore. They want to talk to me. And it's very hard for somebody that's obviously solving problems, closing deals, doing all these things to be on the phone 24 seven. But having that organization planning out on my desk, these are what I, these are the things I need to focus on for me. These are the things that are coming up that I can handle later. And I set up times where I can kind of like take phone calls. Um, I take phone calls most of the day, but I set up times where I do not take any phone calls. So my, prospecting time is basically as soon as they get off from this from 12 to 2 is my prospecting time so yeah showing you my does you beefed uh, it up though yeah uh, <laughs> um, so giving that organization has made a big difference I know for most of the, the top producers that I talk to you know I, I know that some of us made it I made it without having it but once I got to a level I'm like I can't do this anymore without having my calendar my my dad's organized so i could stop missing people's messages or stop forgetting to follow up with people absolutely brandy knows about that too we had the morning routine chat oh no we had the des uh, productivity challenge i think about a month ago so we taught her and other students as well so that's the challenge that we do every month on different flavors so yeah productivity By the way, who, who won who won the productivity challenge no one finished at the end we had no one dropped off no one did it all God, so you saved me some money because i was going to pay <laughs> no one knows. Hey, no one was watching to the end. Yeah. So keep calm, flatline it. It's not about the real estate. It's about your schedule. As, absolutely, Maria. You're right. It's your schedule. Scheduling is so yeah. critical and we're not teaching and this, right, Maria? You're right. That's why we are on it so much. Time, with, yeah. Schedule and time balance. Remember, Andy, when we met? By the way, for those of you that don't know this, the reason today and day I'm, on a, I'm a speaker, it's because of Andy. Andy's the reason I'm a speaker right now. And one of my phase, yeah, one of my first uh, presentation, it was about time balance. For me, particularly for me, the key to success about a scheduling and be honest and honor my schedule, it's about time balancing because you have to prioritize your time and do the important things because we human beings, we tend to do the emergency or the urgent things before the important things. And what we need to do is correct that and take care of the important things first to then take care of the rest, regardless what that is. Absolutely. So if definitely for a realtor or a title company or a mortgage person, uh, prospecting should be part of our priorities. 
and Absolutely. do what we need to do first instead of what we must do in a rush. Absolutely. So I want to open it up also to the people who are listening to this. If anyone has any questions or wants to share a story as we wrap up in the last five minutes, and then I'll go ahead and give you guys a morning routine for you guys to start, start seeing the power of routines. Because like, like Maria talked about with calendaring and everything, if you don't have a plan, if you don't have a morning routine and you just wake up randomly, it's like having no shopping list, going to the grocery store, right? You're just going to buy a bunch of shit you don't need. You're going to just overspend. You're going to be lost. And you're not going to stick to the plan. So you got to be consistent with the routine. You got to have a routine. If anybody wants to be unmuted, just kind of like either raise your hand or write on the chat and we will unmute you. Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind, guys, before you do that, I would like, um, remember I talked to all of you about this. I would like to share, really yeah. share a story for all of you that are present here. All the panel here knows about this. Uh, for me, the quarantine was very stressful. Uh, I went through anxiety attacks, but at the end, I overcame, um, I overcome my situation and I got results, positive results. I got them out of all this, but not everyone has that. And my family has been hit with a tragedy. The day before yesterday, my brother-in-law killed himself. And the reason he killed himself is because COVID-19 situation and the quarantine damaged his psyche, his, his psyche. I don't know, I forgot. I'm, I'm sorry about my English right now, no, but fine. he got so damaged and he got so depressed and he got so anxious that he couldn't handle it. And he, I remember a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to him and he had this awful conspiracy theories about the government wanting to inject us with the vaccine because they want to control our lives and kill us whenever they want to. And I don't know how many things he told me. I, I begged him to get help. My sister begged him to get help. He didn't because at the end, you have to be you and you have to decide to get the help. But two days ago, the morning of the day before yesterday at eight in the morning, he took his life. He took his life away from my sister, away from my nephew. And it's because, of course, he was sick. Of course, we didn't know because we would have helped in another way. But it was because of the quarantine and what this situation did to him mentally. He thought it was the end of his life. He thought he could not come back from this. And now we lost him. Please take care of you. Take care of your loved ones. Take care of your business. Do the right things. Take the right steps. Don't procrastinate about life. And if you have someone with you that you know that it might be showing depression signs, please pay attention and help because it's true. Wow. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and, it was, and he was healthy, right? And everything before? There Perfect, was nothing... A perfectly healthy and caring 58 years old father. Yeah, it goes to show you guys. Let's reach out to one another. Like I said, my cell phone's on here. You may not know me and all or anyone here. Reach out. Like, let's talk. Always have an outlet, right? And also be careful. And be careful with the news, right? That's another thing I said yesterday on my story. Just shut the fucking TV off is what I said. Because honestly, it's, Listen to 15 minutes of news. It's going to repeat the same thing again and again. So just get your 15 minutes in. Know what's going on. Okay, I get it. The world's going to end. I get it. Turn it off and just move on with your yeah. life. Because that's horrible, um, Alma. Right? And that's real. And that's a real consequence to this. So that, and that was the reason for this. Like, this is not just, yes, we want to close more deals. We may do, yes, but it's more than that, right? We want to be able to connect, provide for our, like our family. Yeah, we need to be talking is good. We need to be, you know, I know there's a lot of things going on and I see, let me tell you, I've seen so many people get so nasty with each other and disrespectful on social media that it disgusts me. Um, I've actually had to delete people's comments because they start fighting. I wish I could turn off that comment button off because I see people getting super nasty. And at the end of the day, we're all human. And we're all same skin, same heart. You cut us open, we're all the same. We need to help each other. We need more love. We need more peace. Um, this is not a competition or a race. You know, we have to be there for each other all the time and just do good. Do good for one another. And everything else will fall into place. 
<sighs> yep, that's it, guys. That's it's really good. So I guess let's go around. Um, I guess if you guys can put your information of how people can reach out to you guys, give me your, you know, put down your Instagram or phone number, however people can reach out to you guys so you guys know. Remember, we got title company here. We got an MLO with loans right here with Will. We got Andreina, who's the go-to in anything real estate, right? Alma kicking butt with her brokerage and just shining light on people and helping agents become more. And you know with me with habits, right? Teaching people, agents, better habits. So whatever you need out here, if we can help you, we'll know someone that can professionally and, with, and, and socially as well, right? As a person. Um, so yeah, guys, any closing remarks from anybody or anything, anyone want to say something? Um, yeah, I'll say some, I'll say something to, to end it. Um, it's real life people. It, you are good as, as you want yourself to be, if that makes any sense. Um, this is our personal business. This is our, this is our livelihood. Um, something that, that Rudy every so often will tell us and, and it makes total sense. And he really does it to kind of like empower us and, and change our mindset and, and, and change the way that we think of things. Cause we all sometimes get lazy. So sometimes he'll say, he'll say like, listen, imagine that today you just lost your job and you need to pay that rent and you need to pay that tuition. What are you going to do today to pay that? Because if you don't get it done today, the bank is coming and stripping everything away from you. And we have to sometimes take a step back and we do get, we do get comfortable. We do get compliant with what we do day to day, but we always have to remember we can't stop our job as sales professional, our job to be positive in, into our family. I mean, we can't stop. I mean, I have, I have a 15 year old kid that, you know, I have to take care of and I have to take him to doctors and I have to do his tuition. So every time I'm in that, in that funk or, in that slump or in that man I just don't feel like doing anything today or you know what it's pointless like why am I gonna go out there I have I, I sit back and I think of him and I say man if I don't go out there today if I don't make that phone call if I don't try to land that client if I don't try to close that deal if I don't try to do what it is that I need to do guess what I'm a day away from not being able to pay for his tuition or for his doctor or for whatever it is that I need to do as a parent for him so we wake up and life, but don't stop yeah, we, we can't we can't stop. We just gotta keep going, guys. We gotta keep going. The hustle never ends. Never ends. It never ends. And we're blessed that we work in an industry that gives us that flexibility. But the ugly truth is is that if you don't wanna hustle, if you don't want that flexibility, if you don't wanna make something for yourself, then maybe this isn't for you and you need to reevaluate the kind of career that you want to be in because this career that we are in it is hustle. You have to hustle. It, it, it's just what it takes to get it done. And that's the end. I sprinkled the title goddess statement on that. <laughs> no, good. Title and goddess well, has spoken. No, and you nailed it with that. And one thing I want to end with is this, guys. She's absolutely right. There's the hustle side to this, right? And then there's the side that I'm going to say this. The same way I block off 90 minutes to prospect, I also block off 90 minutes before 8 o'clock, okay, for me, where I meditate. I work out, I'm stretching, I'm doing shit for me because I can't show up on these calls. I can't show up to my clients at a level 10 if I don't take care of me. So moms, dads, you're out there. Remember, you cannot love your kids more than you love yourself. As much as you think you do, right. you can't. Because if you're loving yourself at a level six, you can only give your daughter or your son a six. And it's gonna show in your insecurities and how you just get mad at them and how you just say, forget this, what's going on. So yes, make sure we kick ass, hustle, absolutely. But also I tell agents, make sure you take care of you because if you're not blocking off time for you, then you're gonna struggle in the long term as well. So definitely good advice there, every single level here, guys. I will so. say that whatever you guys start doing today has a realtor, you're not going to see the fruit of that for three months. Yeah, correct. So if you haven't done anything throughout these last few months, you haven't failed. Begin now so that you can start seeing that fruit again in the upcoming months. Correct. It took Andreina 25 years to like me. So guys, it's a long game. Remember, it happened. It, it, I've, I've been working her since 1997. <laughs> so, yep. <laughs> She's been scared of me since then. <laughs> 
That's hysterical, guys. Alrighty, Stop. guys. Well, that's it. I think this is awesome. We should do more Don't of these panels. Yeah, we do. Sunset colors, I think. That's Sunset Nights. William's a Sunset Knight. Look at him. He's a Sunset oh, Knight wearing black. We're wearing black and gold, guys. Wow. Black and yellow, black and yellow, black, black and, and yellow. yellow. Hey, guys, remember Coach McCain? You remember him? You no. remember Coach McCain? Well, whatever. His son right. yesterday <laughs> signed up for our program. And I was more excited about him than anything. He's like, oh, you signed up? Who's your dad? Well, whatever. Who cares? Guys, I think we should do more of these um, throughout the week. As you guys get feedback from your audience, maybe we can get those questions answered on the next one. Okay, audience, if you get, like to talk there about things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there wasn't there was really questions, but like more topics. Or if somebody wanted to yeah. share something, ask something, and didn't want to ask it in front of everyone, you can reach out to every and any one of us. Gotcha. Yep. Correct. Correct. And let us know what you want, what you would like to hear about. Bye, guys. All righty, guys. We'll Bye. Have a good one. Enjoy the weather. <laughs> it's great for working out. Make it productive. Make it productive. Make it productive. Make it productive. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.